Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Saeed Ali Madan Adhan. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will learn what are the polar coordinates and polar integral and how we can convert a Cartesian integral into a polar integral. A polar coordinate is a system which is used to locate a point in two-dimensional plane. A point in a polar coordinate is represented by r and theta, where r is the distance of the point from the origin and theta is the angle by in counterclockwise direction. If p is a point here, then R is the distance of this point from the origin and theta is the angle measured in counterclockwise direction with positive x-axis. Next, these are the transformation equation. x is equal to r cos theta, y is equal to r sin theta. They are used to convert Cartesian coordinate into polar coordinates. And then for the reverse process, we have r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared and theta is equal to inverse of y over x. Next, it is a general representation of a polar integral, double integral over the region R, f of R of theta dA, where f of R of theta is a function of two variables. dA is the small area element of the region. Please note that in Cartesian system, we were used to of having dA is equal to dx dy or dA is equal to dy dx. But in polar coordinates, we will always choose dA as R dr d theta. So that's why I have replaced dA here as R dr d theta. Limits of R are g1 of theta to g2 of theta and limits of theta are alpha to beta. In the next step, I will explain how I have taken these limits. Please note that since r is our inner variable, so limits of r may be constant, may be variable, but theta is our outer variable, so limits of theta are always in the form of constants. Here, the limits of theta are calculated as radian major angle in counterclockwise direction with positive x-axis. In order to calculate limits of r, we will pass an arrow from our region. The boundary through which this arrow enters will give you the lower limit of R and the boundary through which this arrow exit will give you the upper limit of R. Next, in order to calculate limits of theta, we will calculate the starting angle and the ending angle in the counterclockwise direction with positive x-axis for our region. Here, our region starts at this point. So, I have taken its angle as alpha and our region ends at this point here. So I have taken this angle beta. So the limits of theta are alpha to beta. Next, you must know what is the equation of circle. This is the equation of circle. We center at AB and radius R. If we put AB equal to zero, means if we shift our center at origin, then equation number one reduces to equation number two as x squared plus y squared is equal to R squared. Equation number two is equation of complete circle with center at origin and radius r. If we solve this equation for x, we have equation number three and four. And if we solve this equation for y, we have equation number five and six. Now, we will learn which part of the circle it is represented by equation number three, four, five, and six. Here, x is equal to minus square root of r square minus y square is a semicircle in the left half plane x is equal to square root of r square minus y square is a circle in is a semicircle in right half plane y is equal to square root of r square minus x square is a semicircle in upper half plane y is equal to minus square root of r square minus x square is a circle in the lower half plane now after knowing these basic things you will be able to solve this question it is question number 19 from Thomas Calculus 12th edition book, exercise 15.4. Change the Cartesian integral into an equivalent polar integral. Now, in order to convert this Cartesian integral into a polar integral, we need some boundaries. We have to sketch the region of integration. Here, the limits of y are 0 to natural log of 2. y equal to 0 is equation of x-axis, and y is equal to natural log of 2, which is approximately 0 0.69, is equation of a horizontal line. You can also take uh, natural log of 2 is approximately 0 0.7. Next, x equal to 0 is equation of y-axis. And x is equal to natural log of 2 minus y square whole square root is equation of circle, is its equation of semicircle in the right half plane with center origin and radius natural log of 2. Next, we will draw these boundaries. Please note that this is the horizontal line y is equal to natural log of 2, which is approximately equal to 0 0.7. This is x equal to 0, equation of y axis, y equal to 0, equation of x axis, and this is our semicircle in green color whose radius is natural log of 2. Means distance of each point of the origin 
from this circle is equal to radius of circle which is equal to natural log of 2. Now please note that the common bounded region, the common bound region of all the four boundaries is in the first quadrant, this portion. So highlighting our region of integration, next we will learn the limits of R and theta. For limits of R, we will pass an arrow starting from origin and crossing the region. Since origin is involved in my boundaries, so lower limit of R is zero as the distance of origin from itself is zero. And our this arrow exits through the boundary of the circle and distance of each point and distance of each point of the circle boundary from the origin is equal to its radius, which is equal to natural log of two. So limits are uh, so limits of R are from zero to natural log of two. Next, in order to calculate limits of theta, please note that our regions start from angle zero here in counterclockwise direction here and end that y axis where the angle is 90 degree. So limits of theta are zero to 90, zero to pi by two in radian by year. So in order to convert this integral into Cartesian, I have replaced x square plus y square is equal to r square, dx dy with r dr d theta. Making the simplification, I have limit from 0 to pi by 2, limit from 0 to natural log of 2, e raised to power r into r dr d theta. In order to calculate, in order to calculate the integral with respect to r, here we have to apply integration by parts formula. Means if there are two functions depending on r, where their simplification is not possible, then we will apply this formula here. Integral of u v is equal to u integral of v dr minus integral integral of v dr derivative of u with respect to r dr. So here, in order to calculate this integral, we will take u is equal to r and v is equal to e raised to power r so that in the process of derivation, the derivative of r become constant and we can eliminate the sign of integration. So taking u is equal to r, v is equal to e raised to power r, v is equal to e raised to power r, u, u is equal to r, we have this form. Please note that here I have applied the integration by parts and I will apply the limits after complete process of integration. Next, I have rewritten the chunks. Integral of e raised to power r with respect to r is e raised to power r. Integral of e raised to power r is e raised to power r. And derivative of r with respect to r is 1. So from here in this bracket, we have e raised to power r. So in the next step, we will calculate the integration of e raised to power r, which is e raised to power r. So here we have completed the process of integration with respect to r. And next, we will apply the limits. Upper limit minus lower limit. For upper limit, we have replaced r with natural log of 2. And for load limit, we have replaced r with 0. So, natural log of 2 into e raised to power natural log of 2. Now, exponential function and natural log function are reciprocal of each other. They will cancel out each other. And from this term, we have 2 natural log of 2 minus, again, natural log and exponential function will cancel out each other. And from here, we have 2. From the second bracket, 0 multiplied by e raised to power 0 is 1. We got 0 here. And from the second term here, in the second bracket, we have e raised to power 0, which is 1. So minus 1 and minus 1 become plus 1. So after this, we have 2 natural log of 2 minus 2 plus 1. Now, 2 natural log of 2 minus 2 is constant. You can take it outside. Integration of d theta is theta with respect to theta. Applying the limits, making the simplifications. This is our answer. 2 natural log of 2 minus 1. I hope you have understood this question. Please like, subscribe, and share this content with your fellows. Allah Hafiz.